also, can I just point out, I love your J necklace. Thank you. Really reminding me of, do you like High School Musical? Yes, of course. <laughs> it's reminding me of the tea. That yeah. Troy so, Gabriella. <laughs> and Zach Efron actually went, prior to High School Musical, went to high school like in my district. Like yeah. East High, where they shot High School Musical, is here in Salt Lake City. And I'm like, can I take a tour? <laughs> <laughs> What's up, guys? Amanda Smith here with Play by Play broadcaster and in arena host for the Phoenix Suns, Jessica Slate. Thanks for hanging out with me via Skype today. Yes, of course. Thanks for having me. So I'm just going to assume that some people watching, honestly, myself included, don't really know what goes into being an in-arena host. Yeah. So let's go ahead and pretend it's game day. What's your sort of preparation look like? Right. So I get um, kind of like a script in advance, but it's not something I have to follow, you know, verbatim. Um, and basically goes over which different promotions we're going to have, which different announcements or or pregame hits I have to hit, and then I'll go over those, make sure I know the rules of the contests or where I need to be at what time. Um, and then once I do that, I get to the arena at about, the game's at 7, I'll get there like 3.30, um, and then go through the scripts with like the different people above me, you know, the in-game people, um, and then from there we have meetings that just kind of run through everything that breaks down all the way to like what graphic is going to be on um, the Jumbotron and and where the cameras are going to be coming from and different stuff like that. Um, and then you have to, there's a lot of different options. So if the team's not doing so well or different stuff like that will affect how we plan the show and, and who makes those decisions. I pretty much just kind of get told where to be and, and what to say. So I don't have to do too much of that. But then um, once the game starts, I'll stand like in the tunnel of the arena um, and then wait for, you know, the second time out of the first quarter or whatever, whatever different part I have to do. And then, just kind of go out there and, and say what I have to say for the contest. Do you have any crazy stories? Um, we did just, oh, it was only like two or three games ago, but about two weeks ago, um, one of our contestants won uh, $7,000 or like almost $8,000 on a three-point contest. And we kind of knew in advance. We are like, what shot do you want to take? He's like, I want to do a free throw for $700. And uh, we're like, all right. So we get out there and I'm like, I'm interviewing him so that he can tell the fans what shot he's going to take. And he's like, actually, I'm, I'm going to take the three-point shot. And it's because, like, my boss had been in the tunnel and was like, you're only going to do a free throw. Like, you can do a three-pointer. So we get out there, and he changes his mind, which I knew everyone behind the scenes is panicking because they have to have the check ready and, like, all that stuff. So they had to go get it. Um, but he nailed it. He drained the shot. Like, it was so exciting. He hadn't had anyone win that contest all season. So that was super exciting. And then he used the money to – help retire from the military and he's going to use it for school. So super exciting. So you also work as a play by play broadcaster. In what ways do you think that your job hosting has helped you on the call and then vice versa? Definitely. I think since I started doing play by play prior to doing in hosting, I think, or in arena hosting, I think that definitely helps me with being able to, to kind of adapt and, and do things on the fly. And so, you know, if there's, players in the way or if we have to change something or memorize different parts for different outcomes. I think play by play helped me really do that. And there is some play by play if, you know, they're racing to try and build a hamburger or something. Um, I have to kind of call out what they're doing. And so my, my mind already knows how to process what I'm seeing and then putting into words pretty instantly. As far as play by play, I'm a pretty neutral um, speaker to begin with. And so now that I have to be enthusiastic out in the middle of the court, I think I've brought some of that enthusiasm um, into my into my broadcasting, but also I'm kind of around the sport so much more now, um, now that I'm on the court. And so I think I get just as excited because I know what it's like to be standing right there, not just in the microphone. I was also reading an interview that you had done and you talked about networking and how you have to be able to put your personality behind your resume. How have you found that to be true? I think my biggest thing is you're not just meeting someone, you know, to get from A to B. You're actually building connections. You're you're trying to make friendships. And what's nice is these people are people that have very similar interests. They're people that have same aspirations. And so I think when you're introducing yourself and going into something, thinking like, oh, I want to meet this person. It's not just like, what can I get from them or how can they help me? It's like, I want to build a relationship with this person so like we can work together and, and see what I can accomplish from there. But you don't just want to like 
meet a broadcaster and be like, okay, well, can you like get me on your show? It's like, this is so great. Like, I'd love to learn from you. Like, this is what I've been doing. And like, you can get, gain things from people and like improve kind of your trajectory without just having someone like hand you an opportunity. Opportunities aren't the only thing that come out of networking. Great. <laughs> okay. Let's play a quick little game. This okay. is a new one. Because I was thinking like, what are some of the things that I see in the arena? We're going to do one of those. Name as many as you can. Right. With a timer. Okay. Let's do three rounds of 10 seconds. Okay. Let's see if I can do it. <laughs> let's hope I can work my phone. Okay. Here we go. Name as many sports as you can. Basketball, football, tennis, golf, soccer, swimming, acro, gymnastics, if you want to say separately, cheerleading, volleyball, uh, skiing, snowboarding, wakeboarding. Okay. We started to get into like X sports. <laughs> sports are sports, girl. Exactly. Name as many arenas as you can. Uh, Talking Stick, Boston Garden, uh, Staples Center, uh, Madison Square Garden, um, the Honda Center. Let's girl, see. you're not gonna hit me with that Vim and Smart Home Arena? Come on. <laughs> I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think like where I've been. Final round. Okay. Name as many NBA All-Stars that you can. Kevin Durant, LeBron James, um, Anthony Davis, Carl Anthony Towns, um, Dwayne Wade, Giannis Antetokounmpo. Uh, I'm to think. I just watched the whole thing, but I there's some that should have been All-Stars that weren't and I had to make sure. Hey, we could have gone old All-Star. Maybe you, they missed it this year. <laughs> Toby. <laughs> We had some fun fan questions for you. Well, first off, Brandon Buck eighty eight says, "Tell her she is awesome and go Suns." And I just thought that was nice, so I threw it. Thank you. So shout out to you, Brandon, for being nice. Okay. <laughs> so, Casey Stando says, "What's the hardest part about bringing the energy every game night? Whether that's your voice, body language, etc." Um, I think the hardest part is that's not really naturally how I am. I'm naturally pretty neutral. If I watch a basketball game as a fan, I sit there pretty quietly the whole time. Um, the only emotions I show are like negative emotions, like if someone misses a free throw. Um, so part of that is being really enthusiastic, but how I've kind of um, gotten past that is what makes me love this job so much is being around basketball. And so I really make sure to watch the game when I'm not doing something and to get excited so that when, you know, DeAndre Ayton goes for a huge dump, uh, dunk or um, Jamal Crawford hits a three like deep down the court. Like I try and hold that enthusiasm that I just saw from one of the basketball plays and then roll it over into the competition because they're performing too and, and they have, you know, something to be excited about. So I try and maintain that energy throughout the whole game based on how excited I get from watching basketball. Steph Mards says, what do you feel is the most rewarding part of your job? Um, I think – it's really rewarding to get to be a part of that fan experience. So I'm, you know, I get kind of used to it. I get numb to seeing, you know, big players and, and being down there on the court. But sometimes I just try to remind myself, like, it's someone in this arena's first ever NBA game or like they've flown all the way from another country or, you know, they've been following this player since college and trying to, to remember how exciting that was when I was that person in the stands and try and make the best show and the best exciting events for them because you get to be a little part of it. And when they leave, they're not just going to remember, you know, what, how, who won and what points, but they're going to remember those three point contests and those, those different uh, interactions. I think about that all the time at games when you see people waiting beforehand while the players are warming up and they just want an autograph or a picture. And I'm like, Oh my gosh. Like I was just interviewing, you know, Kevin Durant earlier today and and all of these people are waiting to talk to him and it just makes you so grateful it's very humbling to to know that you get to be the ones that's that are around them the whole time um because then there's the small things like oh there's a kid that didn't get a t-shirt and the t-shirt toss and we'll go out of our way to get them one and stuff like that so it's fun to do things like that for fans and it's like you said like those are the things that people remember okay Taylor Lehman wants to know who has been one of your greatest influences while pursuing this career? Um, so long-term, since the goal is to be more into broadcasting side, I've definitely followed Doris Burke and Kristen Ledlow the closest. Shout out. <laughs> so, um, but one thing I've, I've watched a lot of Kristen Ledlow's um, interviews and she does a really good job of being 
um, enthusiastic and engaged with the players. And you can really tell that she's not just asking a question and thinking about her next one. She really is listening and, and, you know, interacting with this player. And so I try and bring that into my in-arena hosting and try and do that as well. Cause I'm interacting with fans and asking them questions and stuff. And so trying to, you know, maintain being as genuine as possible. And then Doris Burke is just, I don't, I can't even like put her into words, but her preparation and, and how, <laughs> how clearly intellectual she is on all things basketball, I think has been huge for me. And any of my broadcasts or my hosting is to just be so prepared and, you know, have as much knowledge about the game. I, because I keep up with basketball, I know the teams that are coming in and stuff and to kind of know what type of crowd this will be for this game or different kind of stuff like that. I think being prepared um, is a huge thing I've taken away from Doris Burke. And I think that both of those women in general are so genuine in helping those behind them so gosh they're just great (laughs) final question from jm best 94 he says what is something that motivates you um for me it's my motivation is always just to end up in a position where i like what i'm doing it's never been i want the highest paying job or i want to end up in this specific city with this lifestyle I'm happiest when I'm doing what I like to do and I'll figure kind of out the other stuff once I get there. That means I have, you know, three jobs or I live with my parents. But like if I'm talking about basketball, I'm happy. So I think what motivates me is knowing that I'm in a space right now where I get so excited to come into work where my boss is like, you know, you don't have to come this early. Like you can come like two hours later. I'm like, no, I just want to be here. Like it's fine. (laughs) Um, (laughs) So I think being in that kind of environment and knowing that I'm not happy doing what I'm doing, I think is just so much, so motivational for me to keep doing what I'm doing because I could probably only go up from there. Girl, that's a whole mood. <laughs> <laughs> this has been so much fun. Thank you so much for making time for me today. It was so fun getting to know you and hopefully our paths will cross in person. Yeah, absolutely. I know we play the jazz coming up, so I don't know if you'll be out here with the team, but we'll definitely talk about it via Twitter. <laughs> Yes. All right, guys, for Jessica Slate, I'm Amanda Smith. We'll see you next time.